G'day everyone, welcome back to GT Lab. Today we're going to be talking about the Tomverk and some of its new features and how to navigate around some of its menus. Okay, so let's look at the menu structure here for how subtracks work. You can see here we are on track four. And if you have a look up here on the screen, it says track four, but you can also see like, like a little one. So what that means is we are actually on the first sample there and if I change it you'll notice it changes in the menu so you can see what subtrack you're on even though you're on track four so these are all the subtrack numbers that are being displayed up here in the screen when I put this in record you can see there are trigs on the first subtrack and the second one, and you can see they're changing for each sequencer. So there's different sequences on each subtrack, and each subtrack has its own number on the screen. So that's how you know where you're at when you are recording subtracks or step recording subtracks. The same goes with muting. When you hit the mute button, you can mute all the tracks, but you'll notice also that the subtrack lights are also on. So you can mute all the individual subtracks as well. So if I play this particular track, like I'll just play this one, which is just a drum. You can see you can mute individual subtracks or you can mute the whole track. So that's how the mutes work. So I have this pattern playing. And another new feature that I wanted to show you was the transform feature. You can see that's here. If I go to transform, well first, first of all, I'm gonna choose a track, say track three. So track three, it's just melody. Now this melody has been locked to a scale. You can see it's been locked to C harmonic minor. Now this melody that's playing is actually randomized melody and you can do that using the transform feature. If you go function transform, you can scroll down here to placement randomize. So it doesn't just randomize the triggers, only the placements of the notes that you've that you've put in there, that you've recorded in there or you've put in there as a step recording. So if you press yes, it's completely changed where all those triggers are again. So it's a pretty cool feature if you were like performing and you wanted that melody to always change, you could do that. Now that melody is being placed around on different trigs. So that's a pretty cool performance feature that you can use live. Another thing that I wanted to show you was also you can do that with drums as well. So you can see on track four, if I just mute the other tracks here, I've got percussion playing. And the same applies. You could basically, let's bring the others in now. So I'm on track four where the percussion's playing. And we can use a transform feature to randomize the percussion. Sounds pretty good, might just leave it there. So another feature I wanted to talk about was the super track. So a super track is being able to change effects parameter locks on the whole of the subtrack. So at the moment you can see that we are on each individual sample or subtrack. And you can see it reflects in the menu there. 
So I'm on number five of track four, six of track four, and so on. If I wanted to access the sequencer for the super track, I would need to press track and the trig, in this case, track four. And you'll notice now that the menu has changed. So it's showing you three dots, meaning it's the whole track. So now if I wanted to go to an effects channel, which is here, you'll notice that I've got a dirt shaper that's over the whole subtrack. So if I put this in record, you can see I've already recorded some parameter locks on different pages. And these parameter locks affect the whole track not just the individual elements. So yeah, that's how you use a super track and a sub track and how you navigate the menus. Hope you enjoyed that video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you at the next one.